Hello everyone. What we have in front of us is the familiar store page from Valve's digi digital distribution system for video games for the PC and Mac and called Steam. And recently, over the past couple of weeks, uh, they released a mode called Big Picture, uh, purely designed to try and get the PC gaming fraternity to get used to maybe using the uh, the television set rather than just a monitor and being sat at a desk at a monitor. So what they wanted to do was change the interface, which is what we see in front of us at the moment, the familiar Steam look that's been there now for a good two years, I think, now, um, and make it accessible for users that want to have a PC uh, underneath the television set, uh, like they would have a console, just plugged into their television, and be able to boot up the PC directly into the big picture mode of Steam and play their games. Of course, that would assume that they're controlling via the keyboard and mouse, but the whole idea of the big picture mode is to make sure that it is available to uh, be controlled via joypad, such as the Xbox 360 controller, which uh, I'm using the wireless adapter at the moment to connect to my PC. So at the moment I've got my PC set up and uh, connected to this uh, LCD TV, and I'm going to show off the big picture mode. So first of all, it's uh, the 2nd of October 2012, so the actual mode itself is still in beta, so things could change over the next couple of weeks. Hopefully it will continue to get better, but it's already evolved quite a lot over the past fortnight. And as you can see from the main page, the easiest way to, the way to get into it is at the top right hand corner you see Big Picture. And when I click Big Picture, you now get a new little intro. And then this is the splash screen, the main page for uh, the Steam now with the big picture mode enabled. As you can see at the top right, it still marks it down as a beta. And if I use my mouse, you get the mouse controller moving around, which I can still click on all the different options to get back to where I need to go. Into community, friends lists, web, library, everything. What's new in my list, so... They're obviously advertising some games for me, which I don't really want at the moment, so thank you. And that's using the keyboard and mouse. But the main thing about this, obviously, is you want to be sat on your couch, looking at all the goodness of PC gaming on your TV, and maybe controlling it with your joypad. So, as you can see, I can move up and down, full control, and do everything I need to do. So let's have a look. Let's go into uh, the store. And this is how they show off the highlighted games in their store page. So Company of Heroes 2, I can click the button to select. And it will look at different screenshots and a trailer for the game. Uh, the prices at the bottom, which you can see there. The pre-purchase price, description. Details, few system requirements, there are achievements, single player game, I presume it's going to be multiplayer and company heroes as well. Uh, community pages, you can click on screenshots quite easily, get full screen look at the game. And quickly press B to come back out again and go to the next game. Let's say I want to watch F1 2012. And again... You get the screen, you get the trailer playing in the background, which you can click on to look at. There's a demo, download the free demo easily. Again, purchase the game quite simply. Descriptions, details, community, who's in your friends list, who has the game, who might already be playing it, what achievements there are on the game, uh, reviews for the game. Again, quite a nice little feature, and again, screenshots of what you might want to look at with the game and see what you expected to see when you're playing the game. Um, okay, so you got sub-genres at the bottom, so genres, top sellers, specials, coming soon, and new releases. Again, all neatly laid out and easily controllable. You can find exactly what you're looking for. I like uh, the... Arts, the, the art style they've got for all the different games. Kind of like a, a mock-up of the box, if you know what I mean. There's certain sections of the box may be taken and, and used as the art style, the artwork for the game. It looks quite nice. Very vivid on your TV. Uh, your community, you can see all your friends list, who's online. 
what they're playing. Whoops. You could chat to them. I could say send a message, start a voice message, view Steam profile, block the friend. If I start a message, you get this new little interface, which you see on the left-hand side, which is how they use to input text off a joypad. It's actually quite quite useful. So you, you move the left uh, analog stick around, and then the A, B, X, Y buttons become a different association to a letter. So it would be quite easy to say, I want to say, well, hello. So H, E, H, E, L, L, O, just like that quite quickly and send the message. I'm not going to send the message obviously because he's not online but uh, you can see how that easily is done. It's quite an innovative little uh, interface for using a joypad to send text because as you know using like a, a pseudo keyboard can be an absolute pain in the backside as it takes forever. Um, okay, where are we going? Oops, All right. okay so you can see your library of games, which is obviously the games you might have purchased. And uh, if anybody has been on a Steam sale during the summer or at the Christmas time, um, you get some amazing bargains for games. So you can quite quickly build up a big collection of games. So here are some of the games that I've been playing recently, according to my Steam list. So I can view all the games. Again, you get all the nice little artwork associated with the game. You can select via all games, recently played, installed, or favourites. So all games, you know, there's a lot of games on here I have, so I can easily go and say I want to get to anything that's marked down as O, for instance. And I can say I want to play Outrun, Orcs Must Die, all that kind of stuff. All easily, quickly navigatable from the controller. And again, you can click on the game, see what you've, how long you've played. Any more links about the game related groups, Steam forums, friends who's played it, and any recent news. Obviously Resident Evil 5 has been out for a while, so there's obviously been some discounts on that for recently. And again, you go back to your uh, your own list on the top if you want to see it. If you want to play a game, the simple thing is you highlight the game. You say, hey, I want to play the game. And you see, okay, usual routine again and you select play the game and it launches you can see on the bottom it says the steam community access uh, steam community access button while you're playing is the center button of the Xbox 360 console which is this one here which is usually the guide button on your Xbox. Now, this is a Games for Windows Live button, a uh, game, sorry. So that button does the same thing for Games for Windows Live games. So if I just sign in, for instance. Okay, so if I press the button, it now takes me to the Steam overlay which you can see again you've got your friends list who's playing what you can still chat to them, you can still voice chat to them, you can still view their Steam profile at the same time you can still see more links about your games look at the screenshots you've published any recent news but this if you look in the background in the top you can still see the games for Windows Live overlay because that's opened up at the same time so what they do is if you press it again it closes the Steam window but leaves the Games for Windows Live one open. So now you can still move around the Games for Windows Live, see your profile, see who's your friends list online. There's me obviously online so I can click back and exit that. If I press it again it exits it but it takes me back into the Steam overlay. Press it again it exits both. So the first one brings up the two, the second one brings up the one, the third one brings up the one and the fourth one closes. It's a bit awkward, but it does. It's it is quite simple to work around, and I guess it's kind of one of the only things they have to do really with the uh, with the overlay system that is on PC games. So let's exit this game for a start, anyway. So another thing you'll notice with PC gaming, what tends to happen, and I'll show you now with Batman: Arkham Asylum, is a lot of the times when you play a game, you start the executable, and it will bring up a, another dialog box to say PC specifications, your input you know, what would you like to set? 
So, for instance, if I play Batman Arkham Asylum, I hit play, it does that. Now, I can't control that with the, ma with the joypad anymore, so I have to go back to the mouse and keyboard and say, yes, okay, let's look at the settings, let's play, okay, with these settings, and that's okay, how it's done, which is a bit awkward. And it kind of ruins the experience to a degree with regards to uh, the, the big picture mode in Steam. But they're obviously onto this because Arkham City was exactly the same way. It had the same kind of overlay that it used to bring up. Except recently when I loaded up the game, it patched the uh, the game on Steam. And what happens now is when I press the uh, when I press the A button. Okay, last you've played, who you want to play? It now brings up this box and says play Arkham City or configure PC options. If I do the configure PC options, then it will go and use the mouse and keyboard to do what I need to do. If I just do play Arkham City, it starts up Arkham City. So Valve and Steam are obviously onto the fact that there's a, there are games that have those kind of extra input requirements before you start the game, and they're looking to patch it to make it more compatible with the Steam Big Picture mode, which is, uh, which is very useful. Now I'm going to have to wait for Batman Arkham City to start and exit out of the game. Again, the Steam community is accessed, and it's also against Windows Live games, so the same applies. Exit the game. Okay, and again, it takes me straight back to the big picture mode, all controlled from the joypad. So, uh, I like the front splash screen where it takes the games, the artwork from the games that you have in your list and moves them around. I guess that's a recently played list and moves them around. It's quite, uh, quite nice looking. Um, the other thing you have in Steam is the... LT and RT buttons on the shoulder of the top of the joypad. If I go RT, it goes straight across to the groups that I'm associated with and my friends list. If I go back, LT takes me back to the main page. If I go LT again, you can see on the bottom it now says LT for web, RT for friends list, and A to select. So if I go LT for web on the PC, I can easily go and have a favorites list for web pages that I want to look at. I can say, right, take me to that web page. You know, I'm looking at the... Uh, BBC Sport homepage here, and I can scroll around the page with the uh, with the joypad, and I can zoom in with the right analog stick in and out quite easily, and I can say I want to watch or I want to read that link, so I can just press A, and it takes me to that link. And again, you can quickly view all your web pages while you're actually on your TV, while you're sat at your uh, at your PC. Maybe waiting to play a game or waiting for a friend to come online and and play some uh, multiplayer gaming. And again, the same thing. You want to get back out of it, you just press the RT button once and you're straight back over to your, your main Steam list. I have to say, I think I'm really, really impressed by what Valve are doing with this, uh, this update. I think it's really a kick in the industry that, that the industry needs really to, to get going to support the, the newer hardware that's coming out for PCs, especially the likes of the... Uh, the, the mainstream like the NVIDIA T, TI 6600 that you can get in smaller uh, form, factors PC, form factor PCs like the Alienware X51 which looks like a console it can be sat underneath your TV wouldn't look out of place amongst everything else would have the power to play all these games at 1080p and you're able to just turn it on, boot it up have Windows set to just go straight into Steam with the big picture mode enabled you start your game, it's just like you're on a console, but obviously you've got the benefits of having a much more powerful PC uh, over a, a, any existing console, and with the ability to upgrade that PC in the future as well to to uh, to take advantage of all the new graphical effects that might come out in the future with uh, different developers. Um, so I have to I have to applaud really Val for what they've done so far, and I really really like the uh, the Steam Big Picture mode. So I hope that's uh, given you some information on this mode and if you want to play about with it yourself it's quite easily, like I say, you just boot up Steam, 
maybe in, um, enroll in the beta project and uh, you'll see the, the uh, big picture mode enabled in the top right hand corner and uh, hopefully you can take advantage of some more PC gaming and spread the word about PC gaming and get more people using them on their TVs as well. So thanks for watching and please rate and subscribe.